Hello and welcome to this widget designer tutorial. In this episode we'll show you some of the widget designer's basic functions including buttons, faders, pages and the media control. First of all, let's assume you've just opened the widget designer in order to build an interface that will allow you to control the manager. In the beginning it's just a blank grey screen which is good because it means we have to start from scratch. You have to connect the widget designer to the manager. Right click anywhere on the screen and pretty much towards the end of the menu you'll find an option called IP Configuration. If you select it, a small window will pop up. At the top of the window you can enter the IP address of your chosen master device, in our case the Pandora's Box Manager, in addition to the correct domain. Usually the domain will be set to zero, but depending on what you're working with, this might change. Once you've entered the address in the correct domain, confirm through selecting Apply. You can leave that window for now. You've reached the point where you can truly begin to design your own interface. Let's say you want to design a fader that allows you to control opacity. Just right click and then select the button create in your menu. A new window opens with the fader area in the middle. At this point you can choose whether you want a vertical or a horizontal fader. Just choose a vertical one for our little experiment. Once you've selected your kind of fader you'll find a crosshairs cursor that allows you to choose where to place your fader. Click into the display for the fader to appear. In order to assign commands to the fader, right click on the fader and go to the command item properties in the middle of the menu. Alternatively, just use the key shortcut Alt P. A new configurations menu for the fader should open now. Since we've only got one fader, it will refer to fader number one at this point. At the bottom part of the window you'll find the command area Fader Control where you should enter 1 in the sequence because you want to control the first sequence. Simply select Apply at this point. Now you have assigned the opacity of your sequence to your newly created fader. Congratulations! When moving the fader up or down, whether with a mouse or via a touchscreen doesn't matter, you can now control the opacity of your sequence. As a next step you might want to create buttons that will allow you to jump to different queues in your timeline. Once more, right click anywhere on your grey interface screen. Then go to create. Now, go to button. An extra window will open with a variety of buttons to choose from. The first three variants, full size, half size, quarter size, are standard variants which are basically the same except for their respective size. Just choose a full size one for now. You will notice your cursor has turned to crosshairs again, just like it did when we were dealing with faders. In the same way you can now place your button anywhere you want. Click left to place the first button. If you continued clicking left, you could add more and more of the same button, which would then automatically be numbered one after the other. You should now right click on your button number one in order to select item properties. Another configurations interface should then open for this particular button, which allows you to enter a whole variety of things. You could name your button for example. Let's name the button Q1 in our case, because we want it to be able to jump to the first Q. A bit further down in the sequence control option you can tell the button to jump to Q1 in sequence 1 and also to play or stop. We want it to play in this example. Every time I click on the button it is now supposed to jump to Q1 on the timeline and play. We'll do exactly the same thing with button number 2 in a moment. Right click on the button and then go to item properties. Then you should name it Q2 this time around and tell it in the sequence control sequence 1 Q2. However with the next button we will choose the pause status. Once you've finished doing all this you should confirm with OK. Hitting Q2 will make the timeline jump to Q2, where it will stop and stay in pause mode now. Using the exact same general principle, you can slowly build yourself an interface that will allow you to control your timeline precisely in the way you want it to be. Sometimes a slightly different way of visually organizing things might come in handy. For example, when working in a theater environment, you might want to use individual screens for each consecutive act or a different one for before the break and after the break. 
You can do this through creating different pages or screen layers, which you can then adapt to the kind of interface you want. Right-click anywhere on your screen. Then go to Create a Page. The small window that opens allows you to name the page you are about to create. Let's call our new sample page Scene 2. As soon as you confirm this with OK, you're automatically transported to the new page. You could now go to Create and select Button, another full-size one for our purposes. Put it somewhere that suits you with a left click. Right-click on the button for Item Properties and go to the top left of the configuration window to select Go to Page and Default to return to the original first page you worked on. Enter page 1 next to the label heading. You should now begin to create another similar button on the default page that will include a go to page 2 command. This will allow you to jump from one page to the other through simply clicking on a button. Follow the same steps that we used to create the first button. If you're using a keyboard for navigational purposes, the page up and page down buttons will also allow you to move from one page to the other. Alternatively, a right click with your mouse will give you the go to page option where you can simply select the page you want to switch to. You assign the names of the pages to the buttons through simply typing them due to the widget designer's real text recognition feature. Should you want to assign loops, clips and other content from your project fold to a particular project on the fly, you will have to set up the media control feature first. Go to Create and choose Media Control as parts of the buttons menu. When you create your first media control item, you will only see a few black and square shaped wildcards. What you have to do now is export your manager thumbnails in order to be able to use them in the widget designer. Make sure you have the command exchange thumbnails activated in your manager's configurations tab. Return to the widget designer, right click and select IP configurations. Then activate download thumbnails. When you return to your media control, and right-click. Selecting item properties will allow you to choose the folders where the content you wish to display in the widget designer is located. As you can see, the black wildcards are now turning into the thumbnails. What's important on the manager side is that the files in question all have a DMX and folder ID, otherwise they won't be recognized by the program. When dealing with media control, don't forget to right-click and go to the Configurations menu in order to specify the layer where you wish to deposit it. In order to do this, find the Devices column and enter 1,5 for example, which means that you want to display these layers on Server 1, Layer 5. If you now click on one of the thumbnails, they will be placed on Layer 5 in Active Mode. Should you want them to be displayed right away, you would have to go to the Configurations menu and select the appropriate command to control opacity. I now want to build another fader to control the opacity directly, like we did earlier. Go to Create, Fader, choose Vertical, click left to define where you want it. Then right-click on the fader to define Item Properties and check the Fader Control box, Devices, at the bottom. Specify 1,5, meaning Server 1, Layer 5 choose Opacity in the drop-down menu. The minimum and maximum default settings will now be automatically assigned and confirm with Apply. If you now move the fader up and down, you will be able to see the layer at the same time on your server. 
thank you for watching.